It got blowy once again in the UK, this time whilst I was out the country. I could only watch the weather reports and hope Alan survived, whilst these sorts of videos did the rounds on the news and social media. Even with the 100 mile an hour plus winds forecast and the low open terrain around where he lives, I doubt he'd come to serious grief. But he could have fallen off his cradle, or my storage could have been soaked. The yard had an enormous tidal surge that flooded most of the hard standing, but luckily Alan is on a slightly elevated area. Anyhow, I was still holding my breath somewhat as I approached after my time away in Alaska. Not for an extended period of time, because that wouldn't have been conducive to walking very far, or to various other vital things. I digress. The yard team had evidently been hard at work clearing up debris and mess, draining areas of persistent standing water, and I couldn't really tell there had been a serious drama. According to the staff and resident friends, only a couple of boats half slipped off their stands, and the rest had been preemptively shored up. The boats that had moored in the creek were okay too. Alan was still there, an excellent start, although I'd most likely expected a call from the yard or a friend if Alan had got loose and began heading off across the North Sea. My storage containers weren't waterlogged, another relief, although the lid had been ripped off my home-built lean-to and slammed against the epoxy base coat on Alan's hull. Again, no world-ending shocks yet. The port side of Alan did bring with it some unfortunate news though. In a cruel realisation of the business principle of last in, first out, Two of the recently bought solar panels weren't where I left them. A lesson learned. I only had time to use proper adhesive along the top edge. The other sides were taped down. Even in a strong wind, typical along English coastlines, this would have been fine for a few weeks. But this was no typical wind, and the gusts had evidently got in underneath the panel and wrenched them from Alan's fiberglass. So, I'm going to have to clean up the messy cured adhesive re-prep the fiberglass and do it properly, to completion, this time round. The panels themselves? Unceremoniously dumped between my neighbour and Alan. I didn't inspect them just yet. Before, it's time for dealing death to those damn shrub tree things. They've been my nemesis since arrival at the yard, grow like weeds, and apparently their roots are damaging the building behind. The wind has helped their demise along a bit, and some branches snapped. The rest, I presume, have been cut by the yard staff and not cleared yet. To help them out and also because the initial felling has damaged the electricity supply post, I'm to be gardener for the day. A gardener without any gardening tools, not even the chainsaw I used to have to do this sort of damage. But, no fear, I have a jigsaw with a ripsaw blade. So I got to work, and eventually the area looks slightly more acceptable. We're supposed to take care of the area our boats are positioned on, and I've been pinged in the past for the crime of spreading a little with my stuff so this labour is for the good of all. Alan doesn't want to be thrown out of the yard for bad behaviour. I've been prevaricating the appraisal of the two fallen solar panels long enough. First though, it's come to my attention that a small handful of you have not joined our quest for YouTube domination by doing the subscribe thing, so please correct that egregious state of affairs right away. There was nothing obviously catastrophic, no snapped plastic backing, no cables torn from junction boxes, no blunt impacts or piercings. So far, so good. Through a bit of mud and grot, though, I could see the upward-facing sides hadn't escaped entirely. There are some scuffs, definitely cosmetic, but also some light creases. I have no idea what effect these will have, but there's no obvious cracking in the cells, the connecting foil, or the plastic envelope. The main drama, though, is with the MC4 connectors and the cables. They were part connected up when the carnage ensued, and there's been some rippage afoot. Some presumably soldered joints have failed, retaining pins have snapped, and so we have a few sorry looking connectors. This, along with how much I hate these stiff, low strand count cables, means we can use the opportunity for significant change. MC4 connectors are pretty much the default choice for water resistant outdoor solar panels, and they seem up to the job, so I'll not abandon the whole system. The work needs to take place inside. First, however, I want to deduce whether the solar panels are dead kaput, deceased, no longer for this world. I hope not. The panels are brand new. I hope their ordeal has just added some character. It's not a particularly bright spring day, but there's enough light to activate a healthy solar panel. I feel that if I can get a near full open voltage from each panel, whilst it's not an indication of perfection, it means the panel works. And so here we go. 
and thankfully a voltage from each in the 17 to 19 volt range. This means I'm going to persevere. Inside we go. All right, so first things first, I suppose I'm gonna to have to get rid of these because these are actually for a future episode when I'm going to pretend that I actually haven't put things back in the boxes so I can then do an unboxing video of taking these things out of their boxes. So I'm gonna move those out of the way. You have not seen that. Evidence removed. Um, what we're also going to do is try and sort out these damaged solar panels. Um, I've just done that. I've just done that test outside, and they appear to be giving me the full nominal voltage um, when there's an open circuit, so about 18, 19 volts. So they don't appear to be entirely busted. I'm not going to give up on them. What I'm going to plan to do is um, reinforce slash clear tape a couple of areas where I'm slightly worried that the lamination's not as strong as it once was. Uh, but nothing appears to have fundamentally broken actually on the panel itself. We had a couple of these connectors snap off and I've already told you how much I absolutely loathe these really stiff cables that they seem to come with. So that's all gonna change. I don't want these anymore. Instead, I'm going to change on some of this excellent um, high strand count silicon cabling instead, which is, it's just tons better and it can carry loads of current without ha having any problems. Um, I was unsure about what I was going to do about these junction boxes. So here, this is obviously where the, the positive and the negative cables come out. There's a very straightforward little junction box in here. I don't think at the moment I'm going to start mucking about with that. I'm probably going to leave it as it is. Um, these waterproof, junk, uh, waterproof glands here seem fine as well. So I'm probably going to do my splicing of cables downstream of those glands. Um, and then I'll just do a waterproof um, uh, covering over those and then probably reinforce the first inch or so with, uh, with some silicon. The panels had sat in the dirt and were rained on over a period of about a week. Mud was the first foe. It also meant I could really see what was a scuff, what was merely muck and what may be actual damage. I can see that some of you may be certain that already fragile flexible panels have sustained damage and so are ready for the heap, but there's nowhere I can see where a fracture has occurred. There's life in the fighters yet. On the other hand, the cables do need to go. I'm going to attach those silicon ones that are better in practically every way. I've no idea why they aren't used in the first place. They're hardly expensive, a pound or two per meter. The big decision has been about whether to solder directly into the junction boxes, which it turned out I could open after all without damage, or just outside of them, beyond the glands. My concern is that lots of heat to melt the old solder, plus the hassle of passing old cable out of and new cable into the glands, is a concern. As a result, I'm going to leave them as they are and create fixed MC4 terminals just outside the junction box. This means I can plug in silicon cables at leisure and minimise the chance of cables shading the cells or generally getting in the way. Some of you hate these heat shrink quick cable joins. They contain a water seal at each end, heat shrink plastic, a constricting metal ring around the splice cable strands and solder that melts throughout the join. If not done properly, it's true that you can yank them apart. Actually, I like this. It means in a violent situation, the failure will be here, somewhere easily repaired. It's a lot worse if failure occurs in a gland or at the solder points in the junction boxes. But I'm going to bed in these joins with putty so the MC4 connectors are immobilized. This achieves two things. It protects the join and it means I can plug cables in and out one-handed. It also gives me a chance to do a head-to-head -head test episode of types of bedding putties. Just a random update on a previous video where I became quite enamored with storage netting. Here's me installing more of it. Yes, you're welcome. These large ones will go on the blank areas after the stainless mirrors. I will leave some areas net free so they are more comfortable for crew seating. And so, as an omen I am sure, and most certainly not a complete coincidence, the sun shone on Alan and I as we concluded our day of damage repair and consolidation. Tree shrub things vanquished, solar panels still present, if not quite correct yet. This year is going to be a big one. I have major projects in store for Alan. The wind and solar power, the all-round camera system, the rebuilding of the whole form around the prop shaft housing, the diesel heating stove. Finally, with major work complete, we may be able to start planning Alan's move to a new home in the Arctic, ready for action. My hours and commitment to the Allen project are set to build. 
it would be enormously helpful if you could scroll to the link in the description and give in to the overwhelming urge to join Team Allen via the new members plans. Oh, and I can now once again sign and send books. So please go and do that too. Bye.